Welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church, the service of the word. This is for Sunday, August 13th. This is the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. I'm glad you could be here as we talk about God's story and how we're a part of God's story. Elijah finds the presence of God, not an earthquake, wind, or fire, but the sound of sheer violence. When the disciples face the great storm on the sea, they cry out with fear. Jesus says, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. The same thing Jesus says today, it is I, do not be afraid, as we grab his hand. Amid the storms of life, we gather to seek the calm presence of Christ that soothes our fears. In comforting words of scripture and the refreshing bread and cup of Eucharist, God grants us peace and sends us forth to be a sign of God's presence to others. Well, as the Holy Spirit calls us together, however, as the people of God, blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your boundary. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. My friends, God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's verse, and you are free and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lead me, I am lost in 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. O God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now God speaks to us in Scripture, preaching, and song. The first reading today is from 1 Kings, chapter 19, verses 9 through 18. At Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king over Aaron. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Zaphat, of Abel-Melo as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazel, Yehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Yehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let's share Psalm 85 responsibly. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together, Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness, righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for him a pathway. The second lesson is found in Romans chapter 10. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend to heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you on your lips and in your heart. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, 
no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between, between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? How are they to believe in one whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Today's Holy Gospel is the book of St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus made the disciples get in the boat and go on ahead to the other side for the Sea of Galilee. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. And immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started to walk on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed a strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. He immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got in the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshiped and sang, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Not quite a story. Look at a story that. Uh, People pretty well, uh, pretty well know this story. This is one of two stories, of course, of a storm on the sea. But first of all, grace and peace for God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Boy, Paul's letter to the Romans. Very powerful, right at the heart of the gospel. It said, if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. That's the heart of the gospel. That's good in news. And it said no one who believes in him, and it could be Jew, Gentile, uh, who, there's no distinction between people. Whoever believes in him will be saved. Good news indeed. So I mentioned earlier, we're all aware of the storms the last few years have brought us. COVID changed the way we lived our lives. And there were a lot of emotional and economic situations that brought turmoil. And I think we're still feeling the effects of that. But I think it's been soon enough we can remember the fear that this brought all of us. Traditional worship was upended. We had to learn to worship in new ways or not worship at all. Schools were closed and our daily routine changed. And we're not able to do many of the things that made our life more enjoyable. We continue through the storms. Now it's time to take heart as we take the hand of Jesus and move on past these storms and sail in the future and turn our attention from ourselves to those who are in need. Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid as we grab his hand. When we discuss today's story, we should compare the still in the storm account in uh, chapter 18 of Matthew, along with this one, because both stories are about the disciples being afraid when the boat with winds and waves. It's easy. I don't know if you've ever been out in the Lake Michigan or you've been in a large body of water where there's winds and waves. It can be pretty scary. But in the first story, if you remember, there was a great storm. Waves swamped the boat, and the disciples are understandably wet. Uh, afraid of their lives. 
Sea of Galilee has these storms and great storms where people would lose their lives. And of course, here's Jesus getting some well-deserved rest. But the disciples awaken him, say, Lord, save us. Well, Jesus called the ones who had wakened him cowardly ones of little faith. I'm sure he was a bit peeved because he's trying to get some rest, and they're worried about some simple waves. Jesus also rebukes the wind and sea, and everything becomes calm. In amazement, the disciples contemplate what sort of person Jesus is, where even the winds and sea obey him. In contrast to the day story, even though there's wind and waves, there's no storm, but the disciples are afraid, not of losing their life, but seeing someone walk on water and think it is the ghost as they cry out in fear. It's interesting, there was a wristband going around that said, what would Jesus do? Well, more importantly, we know what Jesus did. He immediately told them, take heart, it is nigh, do not be afraid. This time he assures them without rebuking them. Now the expression walks on water, we have something that's, that somebody who has extraordinary talents can do or abilities, but no other person has accomplished walking on water. But it's mindful of the story of the three fishermen that get out real early and they're in the boat ready to go. One of them says, oh, wait a minute, I forgot the beer. Apparently that's necessary for fishing. So he gets out of the boat, he walks on the water, and Goes, gets the beer, and comes back. The second person says, oh, wait, I forgot the chips. Apparently also important in fishing walks. And they came back and got in the boat. And the first person gets up. The third person says, oh, I forgot my favorite lure. He stepped out, went in the water, and sploosh. He fell right in. The, t- the two other two fishermen say to one another, should we tell them where the rocks are? So yes, it's not something that's been accomplished. But Jesus told them it is his command to come in the water because Jesus told him to come, he would do it. Then Peter left the boat and began walking on water going towards Jesus. Then Peter noticed the strong wind became frightened and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. The same way the people in the first story said, Lord, save us. Immediately, Jesus reaches out, catches him. Jesus helps Peter in his fear to return to the boat safely and security, securely in the same way Jesus gives us not only powerful reassurance, but also the gift of presence. God is not distant from our fear, but close to keep us safe. Jesus now rebukes Peter, saying he is one of little faith, and basically said, Peter, why do you doubt? Well, Peter was okay until the attention shifted from Jesus to the wind. And then he became scared. In turbulent times, we become scared. It's important to keep our eye on Jesus. And, and we can also ask Jesus to reach out and help us. As soon as they got in the boat, the wind stopped and all was calm. Jesus helped Peter in his fear to return the boat safety and Security. But God, Jesus rather gives not only powerful reassurance, but also the gift of presence, which we give to people today. God's not distant from our fears, but close to keep us safe. So the song reminds us so the, the song reminds us put your hand in the man who stills the water. Take a look at yourself and you can look at things differently. Put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. In both stories, Jesus ends up in the boat with the disciples. The ship was one of the earliest symbols of Christianity. And as I look around the sanctuary, I see the boat being upside down, the hollow boat. And where the altar is, that's like the front of the boat. But it's upside down. And this was done on purpose because it makes a statement. When in the midst of adversity, both safety and salvation are experienced in the church with Jesus in the midst. 
Just as Noah and his family entered the ark and were saved from the turbulent waters, so we too enter our churches to find the saving peace of Christ here. Both Noah's ark and Peter's boat have been used as images to refer to the church for good reason, the church that Christ founded. We can now return to the safe harbor after turbulent times. We can take the hand of Jesus. But here's the thing. The ship is not made to stay in a harbor. Well, you know the old chicken boat. Why did the chicken cross the road? Well, to get the other side. Well, it doesn't end there, however. The disciples just didn't get the boat to get the other side, but they did the other side so they could help others so they could minister to them and help the less fortunate and the people there. And that's what we're supposed to do. So image of the mind taken, we still have the ship, converted ship, but the idea is people come in and then we help people. In each story, Jesus clearly demonstrates he is the Lord of the wind, the waves, the water and sea, elements that we have trouble controlling. Think flooding. Think 9-11 with all the fire and destruction. Tsunami, tornadoes, hurricanes. So what do we do? We grab the hand of Jesus as we move forward and confront those things we have no control over as we continue to love and welcome and invite and serve others. Thanks be to God and the Son of God. Amen. Praise you are my rock, the wind, the waves are high, you hold me when the waves are strong, you hold me lest I die, I die, praise, praise, oh God, you are my rock, praise, praise, you are my rock, my desert sand is dry, you break the rock, a river flows. You hear me when I cry, I cry. Praise, praise, oh God, you are my rock. Praise, praise, you are my rock. You calm the fear and pain. One word of faith, and I am well. I rise to praise and walk again. Praise, praise, oh God, you are my rock. Praise, praise, you are my rock. You host the table set. We break the bread, we drink the cup. We know whom we met, have met. Praise, praise. Oh God, you are my rock. Praise, praise, you are my rock. The Easter grave is sealed. You roll the stone, you God alone. Then sin and death are healed, are healed. Praise, praise, oh God, you are my rock. Praise, praise. You are my rock. You stood high on a hill, a holy cloud. You are on high. Be still, my heart. Be still, be still. Praise, praise, oh God, you are my rock. Let's share our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He sits right down to the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, Communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now for the prayers of the church. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, 
those in need, and all of creation. God of grace and faith, your faithfulness is never ending, and your righteousness becomes ours through Christ Jesus. Send the church to proclaim the gospel both near and far, in church buildings and on street corners, in person, and through digital means. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send angels of protection to provide care and compassion to those who serve in our armed forces and protect and sacrifice for us so we can be free. We pray especially for Beth and Ryan, Jonathan, Jacob, Noah, Irene, and Alex. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, raise up any who are bowed down with illness or sorrow. Deepen our care and concern for one another. We lift to you all who are undergoing transition in relationships, occupation, living situation, or health condition, especially Aaron, Anne, and Bob, Dan, David, John, John, Jordan, Lawton, Lyra, and family, Tim, Kristen, Pastor Joan, family of Dolores, Wanda, Mary, Malin, Pastor Dana, um, Pastor Sarah, and Pastor Roseanne. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We especially lift up to you, Presiding Bishop Elizabeth, and our Synod Bishop Craig, and Pastor Carl. We ask that you be with their respective staffs as they live out their callings to serve as we are called to be one, even as Jesus and the Father are one. Be with the leaders and the congregation of Settlement Lutheran Church in Gowan and the churches in our community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of wonder, you accompany us in both joys and sorrows. We pray for children and teachers preparing for a new school year. Make your presence known in our work and play in lively conversation and in quiet rest. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of new life, you send people to renew both church and society. We give you thanks for their lives of faithful service, especially nursing pioneers, Florence Nightingale and Clara Moss, whom the church remembers today as examples of following your call. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, in the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace with you. Now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom, teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed Bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of age. Amen. Amen. My life flows on in endless song Above earth's lamentation I catch the sweet though far off hymn That hails a new creation no storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear that music ringing. It finds an echo in my soul, how can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. 
since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? When though my joys and comforts die, the soul of my Savior liveth. What though the darkness gather round, songs in the night he giveth. No storm can shake my inmost home, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? A peace of Christ may stretch my heart, a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am His, how can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm, while well, to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Go in peace, share the harvest. Thanks be to God.